clicked on this video, you're probably binge watching desktop or editing setups. I totally get it. I do the same thing as well. And so I'm going to show you my humbled editing setup that I've been creating over the last several years. Let's talk about it. Hey there, what's going on? It's Robert Teager. I'm back with another video. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a regular basis on filmmaking tips in the business of being a creative. And today we get to talk about some of our favorite subjects, which are gear and the types of things I use to edit videos. I've been editing professionally since 2017, and the way in which I support my family full-time is through video production. I have a pretty regular setup, but I think that there's some interesting things that you'll love and some little tweaks that I've made along the years. Let's talk about hardware first. Right now I'm currently editing with the Mac Studio M1 Ultra. I think it's like the fully specced out version, 128 gigs of RAM, all the different things. Uh, I absolutely love this thing and kind of that prosumer blend of power, efficiency, format, footprint, all of those things. I have that studio sitting on top of the Satechi M1 Mac little enclosure stand hub thing. Um, I've talked about this before. I have a Mac mini at my other office that I utilize all the time. This thing is just fantastic. Not only does it provide a bunch of other ports and hubs uh, that I can kind of attack into the Mac Studio via USB type C, um, but it also gives a slot for an NVMe M2 drive, which I utilize all the time. I've got an extra terabyte of NVMe M2 just underneath in that hub. And that's where I keep all the stuff that I'm going to be utilizing from an editing standpoint every day. It's attached on that particular dock. I'll talk about that more in just a second. But those two things combined give me a ton of ports. They give me a ton of flexibility in terms of how I want to import my footage and different SD and media management. Um, but those two things combined are really incredible. And I also have that sitting underneath my desk in a little 3D printed cradle that I ordered off of Etsy. I'll put the link in the description along with everything else I talk about in this video down below. And this thing is just incredibly perfect. Like it literally sits to the side of my desk underneath and underslung so I can keep all the real estate and things on the top of my desk that I need to for mouses and mouses, mices, mice. Would a computer, multiple computer mouse be mice? <laughs> That's the combination and the powerhouse of what I'm utilizing from an editing standpoint. I'm sure you guys would love this thing as well. So check out the link in the description for how I'm cradling and utilizing this hub underneath my desk. I don't like huge, massive keys. I know that's some people's things. I totally get it, but I don't really like to type on mountaintops. I like things to be as flat as I possibly can. So I utilize my Mac Studio with a magic keyboard, and I also have the trackpad. Um, and then don't hate me, but I, I also pair that with a Bluetooth Logitech rollerball mouse. Everyone talks so much trash on the fact that I still use this thing. It's a reveal of how old I am and where I'm coming from. But for those of you that don't know, I spent a ton of time in music studios editing before I started to focus full time on video production. And with a larger 37 inch monitor, it's easier for me to get from one side of the screen to the other. And I like the precise micro adjustments without having to move my hands all over the place that I can get with this roller mouse. So it's weird, but look, it's one of those things like don't knock it until you try. Just give it a little bit. Let me know, you know, maybe it's something that you actually end up, uh, maybe, maybe you like it a little bit. I also have these Yamaha M5 drivers. Um, they're fantastic. They're kind of the newer derivative of the older NS10s that I just fell in love with when I was doing my music studio work. So I have that stuff. They're driven by a Mackie big knob. So that's how my like audio inputs and outputs are utilized. All the things, including this camera and this microphone, which I've talked about in a previous setup, are being driven into a Rode Streamer X. It's a fantastic little doohickey and gadget. I talked about that in a previous video. This is the Rode PodMic USB. I talked about that in a previous video. I love all of this stuff. It allows me to flip a switch, start recording. I can go native into my computer if I want to, SD cards if I want to in that way. For storage, I have a Lacey RAID, the D2 RAID, and also a D1 dock. I have a bunch of different multi-tier kind of storage options that I have. Two 16 terabyte drives that are run in RAID 1. That's my main drive that everything kind of gets dumped and backed off to. Once it gets old enough, it gets moved to the D2 drive. 
uh, and, and there's massive storage there. Once that gets old enough, I'm backing things up to Backblaze as well. Uh, and then I'll use little shuttle drives constantly. Right now, these things are cheap, the SanDisk. And if you guys have seen my crazy video about the Extreme Pros, please be very aware. And if you're going to use them, which I still sometimes every once in a while do, just make sure it's backed up in multiple places. The last little thing that I would say is that I have this awesome standing desk. I got my legs online on Amazon from a company called Topski. It's a pretty robust like dual drive stand that I have. Uh, I'll put a link to it on the bottom. And then the top, I just went to Home Depot, got a 96 inch piece of butcher block uh, and cut it into two different things. One of them at 60 inches sits on top of my desk here. The other remaining portion I use for product shots that I keep in my studio. Um, it's really just fantastic. I also have this little riser stand that I also got off of Etsy. And the fact that I can kind of store things underneath it, right? I put my little notebooks, I put hard drives, a couple of those sorts of things. So it's compact, it moves around, I can move around. I like the fact that it's there. That's my hardware setup. Let's talk about the things that I use to edit stuff. So I know that there's been a mass exodus from Adobe. Everyone has something to say about the 900 pound gorilla in the room. Um, Adobe is massive. They make a lot of different things, but I understand that people like options. And you know what? You should have options. You absolutely should be able to choose what you want to do. I personally like Adobe because most of the projects that I end up working on from a client standpoint have multiple inputs meaning I'm always working in a bunch of different programs at the same time that feed into my main editing software. So I use Premiere Pro. Uh, I've worked on all of the other NLEs that you can think of. Um, I, it's not that I'm not proficient in them. I just choose for this reason to use Adobe. And the biggest reason is because I'm gonna be working on a project in Premiere, but then I need to do motion graphics. So I pop into After Effects, or I need to update a logo inside of Illustrator, or I need to make some sort of adjustment to a picture so I pop into Photoshop, or I need to utilize Audition to make sure that I have the, so I'm always moving in and out, and the dynamic link making those things talk to one another to me is an incredibly valuable part of my workflow, because <laughs> what do you guys do? Export and import all of your QuickTime files? <laughs> I utilize a couple things on a regular basis. Uh, I'm huge into Maxim products, so the Red Giant Suite. I use Colorista all the time for coloring. Um, I use the Trap Code Suite when I'm inside of After Effects all the time. Um, when they had pluralized before they were purchased by Maxim, I utilized that in terms of backing up my software, my hardware, hardware, my footage, um, and creating timelines all the time. Um, I use Splice products a bunch as well, specifically the RX9 audio suite. That's how I utilize a lot of my audio plugins, both in Audition and in Premiere. Um, you know, and a couple other like knickknacks, neat videos all the time, uh, those sorts of things, but constantly looking for the best possible solution and tool for the job, whether that's in a noise reduction or film mix or those sorts of things, um, and just scouring the internet for the things that are the most appropriate for myself. So now that we talked about hardware and we talked about software, I'm gonna give you a couple little things that I think are pretty helpful in terms of my speed and efficiency that I use. I made a video uh, both for PC and for Mac where I utilized the automator function and I was able to create folder directories that I just click on, I name what that directory is going to be called, tell it where to go, and then it creates all the folders and subfolders that I use on every single project that I have. That in and of itself in compound and aggregate has saved me so much time. Libraries functions, I also made a whole separate video on this that you can see as well, um, but it's just an incredible way of creating the assets or storing the assets that you use on a regular basis. And then those two things kind of tie into the last thing about efficiency that I use. And like I said, I have very specific directories in the ways that I name things and the way in which I'm interfacing with those things, right? So they live on my hard drive in particular directories and each particular project has the year, the month, the day that it was created. It has a very specific title and the actual directories and the way in which I organize my footage is the same thing. My cameras have my initials, the date, and the type of footage that it's coming from. So like, I'm always able to pretty much see at a glance the project, the date, and the footage, and the contents within that footage so that I'm not like hunting around trying to see like where the final, 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 final thing is. You know what I mean? So 
trying to think and leave myself breadcrumb trails to know that if, because I've been editing and working in video production for so many years at this point, it's very likely that I'm going to be going back to older projects and start to pull some of those assets into the future. Uh, and I wanna be able to know exactly where they are, where they came from and how I can find them, right? So creating systems in that way so that I understand where things are across time has always been very helpful. So that is my very humble, but powerful and effective editing setup both in hardware, both in software, and both in tips and tricks that I use to be more efficient. If you liked the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and ring that bell for posting notifications. This is Tea Garden with another video of the can. Hope to see you guys next week. Talk to you soon. Peace.